Hello everyone, my name is Alexander Bavalsik and today I want to talk to you about the difference between single mold and over mold discs. Just a little bit about me, I have a background in physics and I've been playing disc golf for more than seven years and I've been thinking about this for a while and I figured I'd put it together in a video. So I have the factors of flight in two major categories. The first are the things that the player can control. So this all comes from our form. The first thing is the force, right? So the amount of force the player puts on the disc is what's responsible for the forward motion or the release velocity of the disc. The torque, on the other hand, is what's responsible for the spin. Now, for now, we're going to say we have an incredibly consistent player who puts the same force and torque on each throw. So we don't have to worry about the differences between the two. The second category are what manufacturers can control. Manufacturers can control things like the wing construction or the, the rim shape, right? the total mass, and then the mass distribution. Once again, we're going to say that we have two discs with the same wing shape and the same total mass. For a high-speed driver, that's 175 grams. What's different is the mass distribution. An overmold disc puts more of that mass on the outside of the disc and less of it towards the inside. Right? So even though the two discs weigh the same, the, the mass is in different spots. But what does this mean for spin? Well, I have an equation for spin right here. Let's label a few things to clear it up. Spin, that letter omega, is equal to the square root of 2 times the torque times the amount of rotation divided by the moment of inertia. Now don't worry about all the math. What matters is that the torque and the wrist rotation is going to be the same for both rows, so we don't need to worry about it. The only thing that will be different is the moment of inertia. Now the moment of inertia depends upon the total mass and the mass distribution. The total mass is the same, however, on the overmold, more of that mass is along the outside. This increases the size of the moment of inertia. Now more moment of inertia will actually decrease the spin due to that inverse relationship. To put this in perspective, if an overmold had four times the moment of inertia of a single mold, it would only have half as much spin off of an identical throw. But spin isn't actually what we care about, contrary to some popular advice. What we actually care about is the gyroscopic effect that comes from the spin, or in other words, angular momentum. Now again, we'll get some labels up there, but angular momentum is equal to not only the spin, but the spin times the moment of inertia. Okay? This is what's responsible for the gyroscopic effect. Now, if you're not familiar with the gyroscopic effect, just grab your favorite fidget spinner, get it spinning real quickly, and then start tilting your wrist. That resistance to the tilting of your wrist is the gyroscopic effect in action. The large amount of angular momentum for something spinning wants to keep it in the same orientation. It resists that change. If you want to see a disc fly without any spin on it, you can take a look at Stuff Made Here's video. You can see a disc immediately fly into the ground. I'll link to that video in the description. Now, angular momentum uh, depends on both moment of inertia and spin. If I use my equation for spin on the left, we can see that the amount of angular momentum now has a direct relationship with the moment of inertia. In other words, the more moment of inertia that I put on the disc, the more angular momentum it'll get. Now, having more angular momentum leads to two things. It leads to overmolds spinning longer and flatter than single molds. Once again, I have a great video resource for you in the description, this video by Doss Savick, where he has a little demo showing how overmolds will spin longer than single molds. This still isn't the full story, though. Next, we need to take a look at the path of flight. On the top, I have the view from the side. We can see the disc goes up in the beginning of the flight, then starts coming down. And this is caused by the lift, which is dependent upon your release velocity. This is not dependent upon the amount of spin you have on your disc. So, regardless of how much our disc is spinning or how much angular momentum it has, it should spend the same amount of time in the air as the single mold disc, assuming these discs are thrown relatively flat and relatively the same way. What will change is how much spin your disc has as it hits the ground at the end of flight. At the end of the day, right, your disc will come in with some amount of fade unless you've turned it over. And if your disc still has a lot of spin, 
what will happen is your end of flight path will look more like that. So we expect overmold discs to actually get more ground play due to the amount of spin towards the end of the flight. But this still isn't the whole story. Now we need to talk about where turn comes from. So the lift that a disc experience actually happens at the back of the disc. This is worth an entire video of its own as to how this works. But for now, we will take the lift coming from the back. This is like you pushing up on a piece of the disc in the back. However, that piece is also moving to the side. So those familiar with vector addition will know that if you push up on something moving to the side, the direction it actually travels in is on a diagonal. So if you think about this for you constantly pushing up or the lift constantly pushing up on the back of the disc, you end up with a change in flight path that looks like turn, right? So this is clockwise rotation for like a backhand throw, a uh, right hand backhand that is. And we expect the disc will turn to the right, as we can see here. Well, how does this differ for overmolds? Remember, even though overmolds have the same amount of angular momentum, they spin less. So we have the same amount of push coming on the back of the disc, but it's moving less to the side, right? That piece of the disc is it's not rotating as quickly. So the path is still in a diagonal, but it's more vertical, less sideways, right? What does this translate to? It translates to less turn coming off of the disc. Now, what about fade? Now, don't forget, overmolds will spin longer. By the time a single mold disc comes to the end of flight, it's not spinning as much as the beginning. So fade, or the force pushing up on the disc associated with fade, takes place at the front of the disc. Again, a whole video in itself. But this time, the disc is spinning to the right, so whatever piece of the disc I'm pushing up on in the front is moving up and to the right. Again, a diagonal path, which leads to the direction of fade. However, on the overmold disc, even though it was never spinning quite as fast as the single mold, it maintains that spin for longer. So depending on the, the mold shape and how much spin you put on it, your overmold disc will either have the same amount of spin at the end of flight or more when it comes to fade. In this case, we see that the arrow is more slanted than before, ultimately leading to a direction of the disc that results in more fade. So let's put this all together. Overmolds have more angular momentum leading to more gyroscopic stability. Overmolds have less turn than single molds and overmolds have more fade and more ground play due to the spin at the end of the flight. I think this is painting a pretty clear picture. We can say that overmolds fly more stable than identical single molds. Okay? This isn't exactly a secret. A manufacturer like Innova has both single molds and overmolds, but they choose to only put overmolds on discs that are meant to fly straight or straight with some extra stability at the end. This is where overmolds are most useful, is when you need a disc that will resist high speed turn and fly as straight as possible. Something to keep in mind, right, this does not affect the flight numbers of the disc. Flight numbers are decided upon performance of the disc, not based off construction. Right, so we're not comparing two discs with a nine speed, six glide, negative one turn, and two fade. We're comparing two discs that have the same wing shape and the same total mass. Ultimately, the overmold disc with the same wing shape should have different flight numbers than the single mold. I do have a few additional points I wanna to get to. First off, overmolds can help with form issues. Okay? Specifically, though, they are more likely to reduce counter access torque or flutter. Okay? This can be especially helpful for a forehand throw. Also, overmolds can reduce release velocity on forehands. So depending on how good your form is, an overmold can be very beneficial for reducing that counter access torque, or if you do have a, a smooth release, the overmold may impact your release velocity, ultimately costing you some distance. All in all, I hope you enjoyed the video. I do have some special thanks to these people for making some great videos to get my mind working on this and uh, I really hope you check those out as well. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, perhaps I could do some more in the future, and uh, good luck out on the course.